Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have no time for long introductions because our first game of the day is underway. We're going to hop into the game now. It's the Corsair Summer Tour 2013. I'm LD. I joined by Merlini for the broadcast, and I'm still logged into Steam Friends. We'll fix that right now, that production value in action. <laughs> Do apologize to y'all for the confusion over channels, but let your friends know we are streaming for the rest of today on twitch.tv slash beyond the summit 2. It's the Corsair Summer Tour 2013. I have been instructed to let y'all know, and... It's not even, they're not even forcing me to do it. It's a pretty good deal. GC.Corsair.com, free Dota TV tickets for this event being handed out every day, and a new promotion. They're actually giving away a fully loaded Corsair PC. For more information on that, head over to GC.Corsair.com, and you can find out all the info. Ghost of Gamers are helping to over organize and oversee the giveaway. So on that note, we'll introduce our teams for today. This is Group D, your final group of the group stages. After this, we'll move along into the playoffs. Scheduled to kick off on the 17th of July. It's Kaida Gaming, the Swedes, on the dire side, and it's the, the Danish-European mix on the Radiant side. Flip side, formerly known as Absolute Legends, loser of this best of three, will be knocked out of the tournament. The winner will move on and play Empire. And the winner of that match will be your second place team coming out of Group B. On that note, Merlini, I'll let you talk. Uh, F3 has a very unusual triple lane with Earthshaker, Keeper Light in the off lane. I think it works decently on the safe lane on bottom, but it's pretty hard to block, especially if you can't control the creep wave on the top. So I would actually give the triple lane advantage to Kaida in this situation. The other two lanes are slightly in favor of flip side. Queen of Pain should be doing pretty well versus. Kunkka mid, although he is, Miggle is very, very low. And bottom, Furion should be able to outfall. Oh, Saiso is fishing with a torrent there. If that hits, uh, it's only a level 1 torrent. Wouldn't be enough to get a kill, but will be quite a bit of harassment. So, you look at the trial lane, you've given a slight edge here to Kaida. The two solo lanes, I, I would also give a big edge to Queen of Pain. Miggle, in fact, almost gave a first blood. Could maybe go in here on Saiso soon. He's got a blink, no points in Scream yet, but as soon as he hits 3, he could be looking for a kill. One creep away. He's got it now. Miggle so is out of regeneration, careful. though. So if for some reason he gets... If he dies, then he's yeah. really screwed. He's really screwed. He's still 240 gold away. So that's like almost every last hit in the next wave. And then he has to watch out for level 2 Tidebringer. He... Um, I don't I don't know if investing in that much stats early is the best option. You really need the bottle bite a 2 minute. But he's putting still putting out a lot of pressure on Saiso in the middle. Yeah, it's going well for the Kunga, but you still got to figure the Queen of Pain will come out on top here. Even with the delayed bottle, once she gets it, she can control the runes pretty easily. And around that level 5 mark, you can maybe 6, you can maybe go for a kill. But Tidebrainer Harass really doing work on Miguel. Was he... I guess he bought the circlet. Uh, oh my god, he almost dies. 45 HP. Yeah, He's, he's just yeah. getting outplayed <laughs> really hard. Like, Queen of Pain should not have this much trouble against Kunga this early. Mm-hmm. And That's Saiso great, great actually has Kunko. his bottle before the Queen of Pain. Well, she went for... Did she start with she the She started circle? with one flask and yeah, and a lot of stats. I generally prefer two sets or two sets of regen. Kunko had a flask and a tango on the start, and he'll get his bottle before because Queen of Pain can't keep up the pressure when Kunko outregens him. Yeah, I, I completely agree. If you want to, I think either that build or you just rush the bottle. You get a couple right. branches, maybe one set of tangos, but... Going mass stats, you don't really need those to harass. But, well, we've talked a lot about that lane. We should look at our other two lanes. Unicorn XOXO on the Nature's Prophet safe lane. Against an off lane Clockwork, I know Bulba firmly believes Clockwork wins this matchup. If he maxes better, so of course he plays a hell of a lot of Clockwork. But, for the time being, Boogie has played more of a defensive build, maxing the Rockets, trying to help out the tri lane, and as a result, seems to be having a bit of trouble. Yeah, Unicorn is also going for a very... Uh, lane presence build with these early phase boosts. He's not going greedy. He doesn't actually have any clarities to... Uh, I hear a blast on top, making sure, making sure nothing's happening. He actually went for uh, yeah the phase boost first build, and he's able to put a lot of pressure on the Clockwork. Clockwork is only at 5 and 1, and there are 16 and 11 last hits and denies from the Nature Prophet. So Unicorn, usually their carry player, is doing pretty well in this lane. Yeah, for the time being, they're looking for a Fissure, maybe trying to block off Maglev. Out comes a Soul Assumption just to discourage 
any additional aggression from Eric will help stay back. The mid lane, Miguel has finally secured the bottle. Could look to control some of these runes. He does have an Observer Ward, the four minute rune spawning soon. And the Lone Druid not using his bear to scout runes because he is on the side lane. So potentially could go for it. But no, Miguel's jumped in. This probably is going to be our first blood, but the torrent is going to connect. I don't know if Miguel's got the damage. If he juked that torrent, would have been able to get the kill, but Ooh, he can't. Four minute rune is a haste top. If Miguel picks that up and oh. decides, to, decides to stay, it could be very bad news for him. But he does have a ward. He should be aware of it. 36 and seeing that, Sysa. yeah, he's is he firing a salve? Because if not, uh, gets boot, so he'll just go back and heal at this point. Or could he be bottle curling super greedy? <laughs> it's Easily. not even that efficient yeah, though. It's, at not that point. That it's not even worth it. Gotta gotta get that value. <laughs> Sometimes the found trip's the good value, the bargain buster. They're doing pretty well on top lane for flip side. Gyrocopter having quite a few last hits. Uh, a lot of it going to keep it alive because he constantly spams out the lane. But the supports are doing pretty well and. The supports on the side of Kaida are taking a lot of harass and unable to do right click even though they have two range Fissure heroes. connects on two, but there's just no follow up for it. If they get a fissure block, they could look for a kill, but otherwise I don't really see it happening. Miguel, Hastern picked up. Would like to see an early TP on him, but he is poor. He still has to farm his null talisman as well as his boots, and out comes the null. Mm. Oh, here he goes. Yeah, he's in the middle. Is there going to be a Fury on TP? I think the Fury on probably could have TP'd earlier and sniped him out, but he is running very, very low on mana. He does have his ultimate, still needs th 35 mana until he can cast it. Overall, 17 7 on your Queen of Pain, 30 and 16 on Unicorn. This early phase boots build, once you get the phase boots, it's so hard for the enemy melee here. There's just nothing Bogey can do. Even if you do manage to mana burn the Nature's Prophet, it's almost impossible to cog him. He's just way too fast and. He's going to outlast hit you with the additional damage from the phases, so fantastic play by Unicorn. We'll see him TP home, but he'll be right back. Yep, and still Saiso is forced back now, so Queen of Pain, although falling a little bit behind earlier, is pretty far ahead now. 19 and 9 compared to 13 and 2 from Saiso, but it is nighttime soon. We'll see how each of these teams rotate come first nighttime. I think it's better for Flipside because they have the early game advantage. Oh, Maglev Gink Train on top. Profit all bounces through. He's trapped by the Fissure. He's low. He's not dead yet. Mania trying to bring him down with Flat Cannon auto attacks. One more. The Keeper of the Light snipes him through the tree line. Uh, just having the vision there right before it hits nighttime. Yeah, good good play, good awareness by Unicorn there using his ultimate. So close, but you generally want to stand on the top side of the creeps, especially against a Keeper of Light and Earthshaker. They've constantly been casting Fissures from here, Fissures from here, and Keeper Light Blast. And maybe they should have Reserve Reward. It's very common for people to place Reserve Rewards in the lane or in the jungle against the Keeper Light, just so you don't take that massive... Meanwhile, mid lane, Miguel's jumped in. He's got a regen rune here. He's got to dodge this torrent. He's going to this time, but no blink. Only level 7, only one point right now in the blink, so from can't really go, Unicorn. but Unicorn's come in, it's a drive-by from the Prophet, he goes for the Courier, settles for a Sprout kill, now Boogie coming back in, but that what can ballsy. he do? Oh, Boogie might be in trouble here, Shadow Strike's available, I think they could have made yeah, a go I on him. I think they could, they could just kill him, they have Sonic Wave on Queen of Pain, they have a lot of mana, they have the Force of Nature Trans to tank the uh, Battery Assault, all he has is yeah, level very, 1 Cog. In very surprised shot. they didn't go, oh. now they'll go, Miguel blinks in, there's your Queen of Pain, oh, no mana for a Shadow Strike, now gets Mana Burn, can't use it. Profit yeah. not able to TP in. No, and that, ult that was just Queen of Pain by herself. Imagine if the Page of Profit yeah, was two auto place. attacks, of, um, perhaps a sprout as well as it was cooling down, mm. would have made the difference. One really strong thing about the Keeper Light and Shaker Light is not impossible to creep pool and secure the creep experience and gold uh, with anything but mud golems. The amount of AoE damage that these two heroes provide is insane, and the range is very, very long. Yeah, always you, always warding in the jungle is important against any tri lane, but against the Keeper Light Earthshaker tri lane, it's extra important. Because if you don't have vision, like you said, they can snipe you from pretty much anywhere. So, I think, I think uh, did they actually even have an Observer Ward? I think they got dewarded because they don't have any right now. They had one at the rune earlier. Uh, now we see a Sentry Ward, but this was long after Kaida had any vision there. So I think it was just really nice play by Flipside, dewarding them early on in the laning stage. And they're keeping these supports there. They aren't able to creep with that much. They aren't able to rotate because that leaves Maglev Gank Train very vulnerable. I mean, he died even with them there. So without, he's even even more danger. But not, no rotation from any of the other heroes. We Queen of Pain go for the Dem Roots. Oh. Miracle's in trouble now. The Fissure connects. Blocks, blocks. Sleeping the Jaro, but after he's used Rocket Barrage, the Prophet ult comes through. Earthshaker's gonna live. They lose their Bane. Not going particularly well for Kaida Gaming thus far. Now Steph Style running right by Mania. Trying to get away from this Nature's Prophet. Blinking forward is Miguel. He's found Maglev Gank Train. And flip side is cruising. 5-0 to zero your score. Eight and a half minutes in. It's game one of a best of three. But already game one looking very good for Team Flipside. 
think that just went very, very poorly for Cage. It caught a little bit too far in the high mobility of Team Flipside with the blinking Queen of Pain and the teleportation from Nature's Prophet. You have to be very, very careful about overextension, being out of position, and being away from your tower. Also, Clockwork is just sitting down there farming bottom. He is level 7. I feel like he could contribute a little bit earlier. We saw him attempt to save the... Uh, Kunko at middle, but just a little bit too late. TP in from Unicorn. Unicorn TP's in. The Sprout is there. Now the Torrent, the boat, both gonna miss. Miguel running really far away to juke out of that. He's got a blink available, but he gets hooked. He might be going down here. He will go down. <laughs> Boogie on a roll. Now the battery assault catching out Unicorn, but the phase boots keeping him just far enough away. Meanwhile, top lane, they've driven back the lone druid, but they haven't killed him off. The two supports roaming around Mania. He's got no call down. He just wants to kind of side sideswipe Maglev gank train here with the phase boots. Not nearly close enough. Good reaction by both players, and in the end, the lone druid will live. He is so close to level six, and they're finding huge amounts. If of they had call down, that was a dead lone druid. Mm -hmm. And lone druid doesn't have bear up. He summoned it a while ago. He's level six. He does have bear form, but 30 seconds until that bear cooldown, he's still very, very vulnerable. And there's the Midas from the Nature's Prophet, even after going early phase boost. So pretty good farm on him. The XP advantage. And gold advantage is pretty ridiculous right now. 5,000 gold for flip side. That's only with one team. Yeah, down. they're accruing a 500 gold per minute advantage. Or gold of advantage per minute, oh, I Mania should has say. called down. His Mania, phase. he's still chasing now. Not even going to bother. The fissure should be enough. Maglet's going to fall. No level six. No ultimate being used, rather. Fox Plox goes down to an Earthshaker ult as well as an Illuminate. Meanwhile, middle lane, Saiso gets picked off by Miguel. So call it just a disaster around the world. And Unicorn's not even fighting. Just popping his ult. Pushing the bottom tower, three points in trance. Midas already online after the phase boots and another 1700 gold. This is looking absolutely awful for Kaida Gaming. Yeah, they're always on the passive side. Kunka has has not rotated from mid yet, and uh, Boogie he he rotates, but is always reactive. He's never there as soon as they initiate. They always have to wait at least three seconds for the TP. Maybe if they got the jump on a couple of these heroes, it would be a little bit better. Granted, you don't always want to be locked in versus gyrocopter and Earthshaker, but things just aren't going well. These supports are so very far from six, or this is just five and a half, but Bane is four and a half compared to these supports from flip side. It's looking very dangerous. Maglev now the Fissure, change. Maglev, oh, he looked like he was trapped there, just able to run by the Kill tower. The now the bear dropping low. If they kill the bear, the hero's almost oh, going to be dead Fox, too. Fox, what is Fox, Fox, Fox has wandered into the middle of three. Now the Enchant Totem comes through. Boat, Torrin all on a fly. Mania trying to run. He narrowly gets out. The Earthshaker, not so lucky. Down with the cow. Now the chase is on. Rise trying to run. There will be an X soon, but it's only a level 1 X. It won't be enough to make an easy combo possible. And while this happens, Miguel is on the prowl through the enemy jungle. He'll back off. It's going to be a tier 1 mid. Even when Flipside are giving up a kill here or there, they're taking towers. There will be a TPM from your clockwork. A nice spread from Flipside. Unicorn might be caught out, but they do take the tower. Queen of Pain on the backside. No ult, just a scream, and should be forced to run. Is there a fiend script? Is there a torrent? There's nothing. There is an X, however. They could X Miguel at exactly the right moment, and maybe it'll be enough to bring him down. No X, just a blind torn and a hook. But Miguel, can he get out? There's your soul assumption. What a pitiful soul assumption it is. Just Only enough, level three. Though. Just enough in the end. So Kita coming back a little bit. They definitely need a group of sitting in your lanes and farming is not the correct thing to do with anyone but Silabear. Kunka and Clogger can make things happen. Hook shot, cog, torrent, boat. That is very devastating to deal with. And now for Maglev Gank Train, it's not really the most mobile lineup. Whereas you look at flip side, they have Queen of Pain and a Prophet, even a Keeper of the Light to bring heroes around the map for his team. So they can be almost anywhere, and Kaida, a team that's behind, needs to farm a lot to catch up, or at high risk of getting picked off. And I'm also just looking at the vision for Kaida Gaming. They are playing completely in the dark now. Zero wards up except for this one Observer Ward mid, but Flipside are going to be past that ward anyway, so I don't know how much it actually does. Mm -hmm. And Flipside can take out the opponent's jungle too, and that's a big big deal because Kita, they're forced just to farm top lane and pretty much mid lane. No one can go bottom just because all the action is top. They need to be there to support the lone druid, to support the Kunkka, and F3 just has almost full reign of the map. Unicorn smoke. Shadowblade almost online for him. We'll take a look at top where the lone druids come in. Mania, if he gets rooted, almost certainly dead. There's your Hulk. He's dead anyway. Most likely going to go down. He's dropped the call down. Doesn't matter, too much burst damage, and now they slip Rise. This will be two for nil. Rise, unable to get out. One more brain sap. 
e even without the smoke, Flipside, I think, would have just gotten ganked there. They have decent vision up, but they just approach through over here and just gank them. They don't have any wars. I think that Flipside could pro should probably be a little bit more aware when everyone, except for one, is missing on the map. Bogey's been found in the jungle. He's got no hook. He's just chasing him out with battery assault. No blink away. Now blinking south. Fissure's there. Could turn around and throw out the ult. He's thinking about it. He's still thinking about it. He'll nail the ult on the Bane, but not the clockwork. Well... He could have turned around a lot sooner there. A little bit of miscommunication between these two. Mm -hmm. and Maybe not expecting the Earthshaker to fissure right away. We see early phase drama on oh, Jagercopter. They are ready to fight, and Earthshaker is actually very close to Blink, too. We rarely see Earthshakers get this much farm early. 1550 gold, 1 1 and 3 on Miracle. He's been hitting some pretty nice fissures. Yeah, it, even if they're not perfect fissures, it's just you cast one when the Illuminate's about to end, and then the enemy heroes lose half, two thirds of their HP and are completely on the run. Unicorn already a Shadow Blade up, and this is where Kaida Gaming already behind. Need to be carrying Dust, the Sentries. They are actually pretty well prepared oh, there's in that regard, smoke. but we'll have to see if they can actually make a gank happen. They're smoking, smoking, smoking. There is Dust on Visage. Yeah, they have the Dust. They have a Sentry Ward as well on the Bane, but it's more can they get in range of this Prophet, because if they don't hook him, he's very mobile. But he runs right into Boogie, now gets dusted, the hook isn't there, Boogie is fishing, canceling again and again, he's still not throwing it, finally he'll nail it. Wanted to make sure he got the angle just so. Unicorn will fall and simultaneously top lane. We're going to have an engagement here too. Miracle, Enchant Totem in the bear. Ryze now on the run. He gets rooted. Look for the familiar stuns. Trying to hit two. There's one. There's two. Miracle in trouble. Call down his throw now. Barely to live. And now he'll have his blink dagger. And while that was happening, Queen of Pain finding a solo kill mid. Uh, or no, sorry, it was bottling a regenerant, but is now looking for kills. Teleporting towards the top lane is your Nature's Prophet. There's your Sprout. There's your Shadow Blade Special. Blinking forward is Miguel on the Queen of Pain. Finds the kill with the Scream. Now the Familiar's to fall. And it is a bit of a bloodbath, Merlini. 11 to 8, 15 minutes in. But it's been constant action for all 15 of those minutes. Yeah, and now with the Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker, you really have to be scared for Kaida right now. They're just not getting any farm on any of their heroes. Kunko just has Phase Boost, Bottle, Visage, no items. Lone Druid trying to desperately get his Tranquil Boost or perhaps a Vlad's. I don't even know where his bear went. Looks like he's down yet again. It just shows you how much more Flipside has been able to farm and take advantage of their split push. Because Kaida Gaming have been ganking really well. They've caught up pretty much in kills. Score 11 to 8. It was at 1.9 to 2, I believe. So, despite catch up in kills, they're dealing with the Midas advantage. They're dealing with Flipside farming all three lanes and the enemy jungle and, and taking towers. Uh, Flipside, not the smoothest play, but overall, strategically, this is what they want to do. Take a lot of aggressive fights, keep Kite on the back foot, and, and force Kite to gank you from with three or four. They are going all out, trying to desperately get an advantage in this 15 to 20 minute phase. It is really important for them to do so. They're getting kills, but they really need to come out decisively on a team fight. 3-1, 4-1 would be good enough to maybe force F3 out of their jungle. Mania will try to TP out. TP. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so like close. That's like one of those mo scenes in a movie where the, the, the ship's blowing up, like the, it's like an oil tanker and explosions all around you and mm. James Bond just leaps off at the last possible second, flames lick his ass and <laughs> he still lives. So they finally forced F3 out of their jungle, but they haven't been able to farm in the process. They're just looking for kills right now and no one has time to stop by and farm except maybe for Maglev Gang Train. Again, Phase Boots and Ring of Regen on him. I guess he's going for the Radiance with no Midas. That's going to be a very late one. Yeah, the nice thing about the Midas into Radiance is even if it doesn't go well, you can just back off. But if you try to farm a completed relic and it, it doesn't go and and then it doesn't go well, you're just sitting around all these engagements having really nothing to your name. So I think the generally the Midas Radiance is just the much safer build, even though it seems greedy, because if it doesn't go well, you just don't get the radiance. You build something else instead and you still have some additional gold. So Kata can't really push right now just because they have a keeper light, they have a blink shaker. It would just be a disastrous idea if they Five man pushed. They, they, they really need to get a couple of kills here and there. Force the Shadow Blade Nature's Prophet in a very defensive position. He's farming his own jungle right now as opposed to uh, really far up into a lane or an opponent's jungle. And just try and get easy picks where they can. Create a little bit of space for this lone druid. But going past the river uh, and five man pushing is at the absolutely worst idea they could do. Keeper of the Light with a four staff. So he continues to find farm. Miguel on the hunt. He'll spot Steph style out here. Oh no. This is a very sad visage. About to be very sad. The Prophet Ultra comes soon. There's your Scream. Your ult as well. Steph Style still alive. Now X. Torrented. Pulled back into the torrent. Is there a soul assumption? One second to go. This could be the death of Miguel. It will be. Now a hook from Boogie. 
dancing on their grave. I don't gets think two. that Nature's Prophet will hit him. It looked like he might have been in fog as it was bouncing around. I'm not exactly sure, but I th I'm pretty sure it did. Oh, it did? Okay, well, it's level two. Just a re he's got 1100 HP. Oh, yeah. That's a visage with just treads. I think he just tanked his way through. I could be wrong, but it looked yeah, like I it don't, I don't actually know, but just barely not enough damage. And trying to convert this into a push, it's so difficult. They kill Keeper Light, but Earthshaker able to block this off. They still have Glyph up. This tower's still at 1050 HP. I think this is just a waste of time for them. And Kaida Gaming just parked at the mid lane for the time being. They'll retreat out and... I think if you're flip side here, you just have to be a little bit more patient with your engagements. I'd like to see better wards from them. They have one ward in the enemy jungle, but previously they had like four wards in the enemy jungle. So that lack of vision getting them into trouble. and They could just bait with Gyrocopter or with Queen of Pain. They've been playing very aggressively on those. I would like to see a counter gank with the Earthshaker and the Keeper Light. They're just sitting there waiting for them because once you hook shot, the team has to run to you or X Torrent. You know exactly where the fight's going to happen and that really plays to the advantage of Earthshaker and Keeper Light who need who needs setup, they need the enemy to come into them. Yeah, and then the gyro who's about to get a BKB. That's the other big thing, is once he has it, Kaida Gaming, there's minimal physical damage, I feel. There's familiars, there's a bear with phase boots, maybe a relic in a few minutes, but it's not overwhelming yet. Kunkka doesn't even have a Shadow Blade, so this BKB gyro will be able to get off cooldown, probably at least four or five flax and an entire rocket barrage, and that should be enough with Urshaker follow-up to just completely slaughter Kaida if they try to engage. Uh, the other thing that I think Flipside could be doing here is just scouting the Roshan pit, making sure that Kaida doesn't try to sneak one in. Because with Visage, as soon as he gets a medallion, they can Rosh. And Flipside also, I think they need a mech if they want to choose five-man engagements. But with Keeper Light going for the four set, it looks like they just want to split and farm up a little bit more. Wait, Maybe wait for another big item on Profit and another big item on the Queen of Pain. Speaking of Queen of Pain, she's still very poor. We've seen her involved in a lot of kills and a fair amount of deaths too. Power Tread's ultimate orb just going full HP. Yeah, seems like a good game to tank up to me. Maybe it... I guess she's having a decent enough time, 4-3-1, and one, that doesn't feel BKB is necessary, but I wouldn't have minded that build either. There, there's Fiend's Grip, there's Root. He's going to be the main target for x Torrance. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just there's a lot of magic damage, and even though there's a lot of disables that go through BKB, there's not much physical damage yet. So mm. at the same time, you could go for Lincoln Sphere here. That wouldn't be a bad pickup. Could go for a Scythe of Ice and... They could use the extra lockdown. They actually only have Earthshaker. He's amazing AoE lockdown, but he's only one hero. So here comes a five-man push from Kato. And this should be an easy tier one going their way. As for flip side, I think they're okay with giving this up. They're not trading particularly well, but they're not in position. If they try to engage into this, they will fall. So perhaps a little bit slow to react there. They'll go for the trade instead. If they can set up shop under this tier 2, Kaida are going to have to TP into the base if they look to defend, and already Unicorn's in position. If you TP anywhere else, you'll be absolutely slaughtered Ruki by this behind too. He might find Miracle. Worst hero to get caught, and now Hull Enchant Totem actually drops the Fissure. No Battery Assault, there's your Echo Slam. If Clockwork Cogs and Battery Assault's an Earthshaker, he actually can't even cast Fissure. That's how long his cast animation is, but he ends up getting the jump on the Clockwork. Usually it goes the other way. Yeah, it's a really precarious position for the Clockwork. You can't really use the rocket to scout because because then they'll just find you and straight up yeah. kill you. But oh, hey, there's a rocket coming <laughs> from the south. Well, I guess I'll turn Ragnarok around and look Gang for you on top. He it looks like he's, he's got relic gold. Danger. The courier's not there though. Up to 4K. Now he looks to run. Calldown's not available or not being used yet, I should say. In comes the missile. They have no way to cancel this TP. Miracle just a split second late. Didn't have mana for the fissure. Yeah, yeah, it looked, looked like, like it. Well, he blinked and then he knew about it. I think he maybe could have just fished that. Didn't see how far away he was, but... Yeah, or in the a end, recall from the Keeper Light to just get him there a little bit faster. That would have been next level. Yeah. <laughs> Maglev <laughs> Gangtrain very close to his Radiance oh, now. Oh, they, they had a Force Staff on Rise. Uh, maybe it wasn't close enough to force the Earthshaker. Oh, well. They don't get the kill in the end, so something fortunate for Kaida. That would have really hurt them, because this Radiance is already going to be rather late. I mean, mm. 23 minutes in isn't that bad considering that he went phase boots first but it's still pretty slow yeah they can stun lock it too they can man leak it they can sprout it there's a lot of ways that they can just keep it in place in case it does decide to split push ganking the bear is not a bad idea at this point considering he gives 300 gold yeah Shadow blade up on kunkka are they gonna go on miggle they'll go on miguel he doesn't have a bkb he could have easily farmed one by now but instead he'll be x torrented and blown up, and now on the high ground, Lurks Miracle. This could be a well-placed fissure, it will be. There's your call down as well. Now the flax to fly. Saiso dropping pretty fast. Miracle, however, first one to go down. Still they chase Saiso, he shadow blades out. Now you're Bane. Caught out, Miguel, he's bought back for this. He's rejoined the fight. Now blinking forward, hunting boogie. Your clockwork retreating now. On the side, this mania. Looking for a rocket barrage. Can he get in range for it? He'll drop the missile. Now a hook to the north. Boogie is really stepping his game up as we approach the mid game. Gotta say, his clockwork 
has been doing a lot of work after a rather slow start. Impressive resilience from him. I'm surprised there's no sort of detection from the side of Flipside. Maybe they're just forced playing a little bit greedy. They know that the Kungas has Shadow Blade for a while. No sentries, no dust. And Kata came out pretty far ahead on that engagement. Scylla Bear did not die. It was one for one trade and actually two for one trade and forcing Quap to buy back. The problem is they're just getting so horrendously out farmed though. I mean, you look at some of these supports, seven CS on Bane. Earthshaker, Keeper of the Light have 27, 49. The, and of course, then there's the top farmers, and overall, the cores of Flipside getting a lot more. Tower-wise, they lead by, let's see, they have five towers, only one tower picked up by Kite Gaming. And as a result, Merlini, we've got ourselves a 14,000 gold lead, a 5,000 experience lead. Kite have a decent high ground lineup, they have some heroes that scale well, but I feel Gyro is by far the strongest late game carry in this game. And, uh, as a result, I think pressure's still on Kaida to continue to go for what they're doing now. Smoke ganks, forcing engagements, maybe sneak and rush. They can't just sit back and farm. If they take a big fight, though, they can sweep a lot of towers and maybe half that gold advantage with one big fight. But it really depends, I think, on the Shaker trying to be there when the time is right and Queen of Pain not getting engaged on. She does not have a BKB. She really can't go in first. And no buyback for another four minutes on her. I would uh, like to see an initiate by Nature's Prophet, probably. He has Shadow Blade. He has the Scythe of Vice. And it looks like most of the time, Kita is getting to jump on Flipside instead of the other way around. Yeah, that's, it's interesting that they are because Flipside have the very mobile lineup, but just more smoking. Boogie fishing for a hook. He keeps on pump faking. Now he's going to nail it. Fiend's Grip's there. Battery Assault as well doing good damage. And Miguel will fall yet again. Completely changed then would have mattered what items he had there. No way he's getting out. Now your Radiance for the Lone Druid. 25 minutes in. Not the fastest Radiance. We saw a 17 minute Midas Radiance yesterday, I think. But this is better late than never. But Flipside is always split pushing. Even if they catch Miggle, they're still trading for Oh, Mania getting hit pretty yeah, smart, hard. Smart BKB there. Could have been x Torrent So back. Had no way out if he did get caught. So, well, BKB, he'll TP out. And I think it's worth it. They do force, what, four heroes back from Kaida. Otherwise... Maybe Kaido would try to go for Roche off of that. Unfortunately, they don't have a medallion. I feel they have the perfect lineup for Visage or Bane to pick one up. But yeah, they're just so poor. Well, Visage does have an Ogre Club. Yeah. Ogre Club's not bad, but I, I think the medallion just gives you so much more of a tactical advantage. If you get that kill on Queen of Pain, you can just go Roche. Mm -hmm. And Queen of Pain, going for Lincoln Sphere, actually. X Torrent. And Grip. Yeah, and and grip. I guess it's okay. Root, you don't really want to be popping your Lincoln Sphere. Solo but. Assumption, yeah. either. But. I mean, they have most of the time just been initiating with a grip on her or an X Torrent, and being able to block one of those hopefully will let Miggle survive for a little bit longer. Okay, we're actually going to try to fix an audio issue with the stream real quickly, guys, so bear with us. We're bringing it back to us real quick. Apparently, I left the stream open very quietly. I'm not sure if. Uh, hopefully, it didn't bother you guys too much, but we should be good to go here, Callum, so we'll hop back in. Man, I'm having a bad hair day, huh? <laughs> Unicorn on the left side? Yeah. Ganking the bear. Well, that bear's worth a lot of gold. Yeah, this is one of the problems with the Radiance Bear. It just gives so much gold now, and Flipside just have so many spells to take advantage of it. I talked about the Mana Leak before, Instant Stunning, and if that bear goes down once, they can just force a push. It'll probably die to the massive amounts of AoE from Flipside, and there goes the majority of your damage until Kuka gets some more items. He's going for BKB, though, and without a Chrysalis, these BKBs are going to be pretty hard to puncture. Yeah, BKB up on the Kunkka... Gyro's still not having the big damage items, but at long last, Mania should be able to pick one up. 3.6k gold. We'll see either the Butterfly or the MKB coming out now. Either one would be viable. He'll pick up the Eagle Horn. Makes sense. You're up against the Lone Druid, and uh, minimizing that root chance is always going to be useful, I feel. So, I like that pickup. I think the big thing for Flipside now is they just have to get their three cores, their next set of items. The Prophet needs the item after, I mean, whatever it is for the Scythe device. Could be a Mansa style, could be a damage item. Could even just be, uh, I guess those are the main ones. Yeah, Manta style or just some sort of damage. It's a little bit squishy. A BKB wouldn't be too bad for him mm -hmm. either. And then Queen Necro of Pain. 3's not bad either. They have a Shadow Blade on the Kunkka and the Splash damage can kill it. Often the Radiance Bear can kill it too. Uh, it's not a bad choice, especially considering they split pushing most of the time instead of forcing 5 on 5s. So Flipside slowly losing control of some areas of map. Bob and Jogo now being farmed by Kaida and... Roshan is a pretty big point of contest. I'm surprised neither team has made a move for it. Kaida have been smoke ganking a lot, and with this constant split push from flip sides, they aren't so vigilant about Roshan. We haven't seen Unicorn send his trance to scout yeah, there. There's been no scouting there. The warding has been minimal as well. Right. And if they, again, if they had a medallion, that's a very fast Rosh. Without it, I still think they could do it pretty quickly, but nobody making a go for it. It feels like both teams aren't really 
quite recognizing their opponent's mistakes and sort of uh, weaknesses in their style and aren't punishing as hard as it could be. But I do like what Kite has started to do, which is just using the Radiant Spare to push out the lane. Sure, you give away some gold here or there, but then you can go farm the enemy jungle. You can actually leave your base, and I think this is the best thing they can do. I don't know if they, this gets them back into the late game. I, the Gyro should still be able to outcarry uh, a lone druid with a 27 minute radiance when he's already got BKB, drums, butterfly coming any second now. But the gold has leveled off. Looking at the gold graph, it's, it's been the same for maybe 10 the minutes. Right. It was maybe 13,000, so only 2,000 change in 10 minutes. That's pretty good for Kaida. Even with this Midas advantage, even with the constant creep stacking for Gyrocopter. And finally, they decided to group up a little bit, but it's only three, four heroes. I guess they have the mech, and they have the recall, and they have the Nature Prophet, so they should be five strong. Grouped up as a squad of four. Flipside are going to push the tier two bottom. Kaida's last remaining outer tower. There's your X, your Torn as well on the Mania. He'll get pulled back in. Did not want to pop his BKB for this, and he won't need to. The mech keeps him in fighting shape on the top side of the map. Unicorn XOXO on the Nature's Prophet. Defending the tier 1 top, somehow it still stands, so too does the tier 1 mid. Just shows you how far ahead Flipside has been this entire game. Now a blink, a fissure that catches 3 for Miracle, echoing, only clipping 1 though. Once again, the X really slowing down Mania's aggression. They'll brain down Sai, so they have to do a lot to take care of him. So they get rid of the Kunkka with a big Queen of Pain Sonic Wave. And can they go Roche now? They're heading towards the pit. I think they need to try and defend this push on top though. Oh. We see, we see them retreat and Jarrah cover TP. So. Yeah, both teams have done a nice job of using split push to prevent their opponents from taking Roche or forcing high ground or things like that. So I think smart play from both teams in that regard. And let's see what Maglev Gang Train is going for next. Should be an AC. They need more items on the bear, more items on the Kunkka. Kunkka constantly dying is not helping them out at all. This has been a tough game for Migo. 30 minute Lincolns, normally a 17 to 18 minute Lincolns. Going on Boogie. This is what you want, but he did start the point booster. Boogie. Able to hook out of trouble. He's really a Spider-Man of Clockworks this game. <laughs> his clock started off quite slow, but mm. he's been hitting some. And when he's actually with his team, he performs pretty well. But early game, he was just showing up a, just a few seconds too late. And Clockwork, really a timing-dependent hero on those counter games. And I go back to the laning stage, and I think you just need to play more aggressively as the Clockwork at the early levels. Once Prophet gets his phase boots, you're screwed. But if you just go on him with battery assault with Cogs at level one or two. You can zone him out of the lane pretty effectively. It's tough against the safe lane Prophet anyway, but I didn't feel his laning stage was the best, but his mid game has been quite solid. Mm, 2 1 and 7 on him. Pretty good. And we see a Desolator pickup by Unicorn, so this was the damage item that LD was talking about. And he still has two slots left. He can sell his Magic Stick and perhaps his Midas later. And he's going to be a fantastic split, pu split pusher with that item. I really like Manta if you want to focus on split push. And you're up against the Lone Druid, so you can Manta out of Entangle. It would be a decent pickup. The other option is a BKB. If you're worried about the burst damage, the nukes, uh, that's a good choice. But at this point, he does need something to help him stay a little bit more survivable. He's, he is awful squishy. All that gold on him, 17,000 gold worth. But flip side, if he gets, or Unicorn, if he gets caught, uh, Here's he will the go Aegis. Down. I think that Mania should probably get it. I would like to see a recall on him because I think he's yeah, probably he's by the far the best, yeah. best character. Nature's Prophet can just buy back in TP and no big deal with Aegis on Gyrocopter and potentially a third life with buyback and recall. That could just be right, what they need. We're going to see a hook from Boogie. Roche is dropping low. No hooks being attempted yet. Aegis will be claimed by Nuclear. Where Nuclear. did he shoot the rocket? I didn't actually see the rocket. It wasn't in the pit. In the pit. Uh, I think he, he might have shot it down the lane. They, they have a, a lot of, we, we often see Visage just keep their bats constantly right here. It's a little bit too late now. Roaching's already down, but bat here, they could send the bear in. They can use rocket for from the clockwork. They have a lot of ways to scout Roshan, and I guess they haven't really seen Flipside around that. They have no wards on the top lane, though. You really have to suspect something's going on when all these heroes are missing on the side of Flipside. But the Gyrocopter was farming top, so maybe that was that lent to their And, the, and they have such a good Aegis jacking lineup. You hook in, you throw a torrent and a boat on top of Flipside, that could just completely mess them up. And, and the Vision stuns, too. Yeah. A little a little disappointed Kai didn't contest that, but they're clearly feeling like if they lose that fight, they just lose the game. So they'd rather play it safe and split push, try and farm their way back in. But they've got a lot of farming to do, as now Flipside will lead by 20k gold, 12k experience. We're 32 minutes in. It's the Corsair Summer Tour 2013, your final day of group stage action, brought to you by Beyond the Summit. Of course, I'm LD. He's Merlini. Hope you guys are enjoying the broadcast. We'll have at least one more game for this series, possibly two, and then another best of three, the final one of the group coming up immediately thereafter. And on that note, Kaida Gaming, in game one, they're trailing. They're trailing by a lot, and they seem to be in grave danger of dropping 0-1. I would like to see them... Um 
try and gank the bear actually just because it causes such a nuisance on them. They were hanging around the T3 uh, in middle, looked like they were trying to push, but the, with the bear pushing bottom next to the T2 tower, it's very difficult for them to do that. However, the Spirit Bear does still have a Quelling Blade on it in case Nature's Prophet does decide to do it. This I think is it's a definitely bit overconfident by Miracle. He thinks he could take care of this bear by his lonesome, but one root would have gotten him killed. Now they got to sight the bear. Kill the bear. Kill the bear, says the, says the cow. And they yeah. will bring the bear down. That, that's just very, very annoying to have to deal with the Radiant Split Push. And just kill the bear. It's been twice now. Isn't, and Isn't that kind of backwards? What? The cows are cows? killing bears. Oh. Cows are carrying these huge totems and killing bears. Cattle? Cattle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After playing Agricola, <laughs> I always call them cattle now. <laughs> Who won last night? Uh, I won, but it was, it was their first time. Lumi likes the game a lot, though. I so. haven't gotten to play it yet. I, I was know. sick last night. I was sleeping. It's because you're always working, ca casting these these. I would have played, games. but I was sick. Oh my god. Well, feeling a little better today, and, well, kind of not feeling so hot in this game. They're definitely bleeding from a couple different angles, trying to stem that bleeding. We'll see. Flipside march down the middle lane. Three heroes grouped up uh, on this lane. Actually, they call it four is the smoked up Earthshaker has joined the fray. If Miracle gets a big blink initiation, that could just be game this, right This here. is a really good time to push. They have the uh, Aegis on the bear. DD on the gyro as well. Yeah, they took, or they have the Aegis on the Nature's Prophet. They killed the bear, and they have the Butterfly and no AC on the Lone Druid. Very good time. Unicorn pushing the bottom lane. He's got the Aegis, and on the mid lane, it will be the gyro. Now they're all going to rotate bottom Unicorn. Grave chill, no commitment yet. Familiar is perched on the high ground, just waiting for the moment to strike. Magla Gangtrain is destroying towers on the left side, though. Yeah, well, let's have the Lone Druids take a tier two, but flip side are threatening tier threes on both lanes. Middle as well as bottom. Damage has been fairly minimal, and now a TP in comes from Miracle. Unicorn XOXO is here to start off. He showed his hero in the lane, and he'll pay with his own life as a result. Immediately, they make the correct response, Kaida, trying to catch the retreating other three heroes, but just too late to get in, and now flip side. One hero pushing top, the other four going to barrel down. He just bought his it. AC recipe too, so he does not actually have buyback for 50 seconds until he respawns. I didn't like the decision to show himself in the lane there. I think you're much better off just hiding in the tree line. Because mm -hmm. uh, your bear's doing most of the work anyway. He, they might have found him regardless, but they made it, he made it a bit easier. Flip side, because he to pressure this tier 3 mid. Unicorn chipping away at it right now with the Desolator. The tower's falling fast. There is... A glyph available, but they've chosen not to use it yet now. The tier, the rack's under pressure. Enfeeble up on two heroes, and they're still bringing it down fast. One big Tidebreaker cleave will drop Mania incredibly low. Is there a mech? Is there any way out? Recall. Now the Torrent comes through. Unicorn Fiend's Grip held in position. Now the Fissure as well. They can recall this Gyro in, but is it going to be too late? Miracle, no Echo Slam. He'll go down. They've lost two. It could soon be three. The Airshaker's still alive, but I imagine he's got to die. Now Boogie, the turnaround comes. And it looks like Miracle is going to make a miraculous save and somehow get out alive. Miguel on the hunt, chasing towards Fox Pox. He's low. The Familiars could spell his doom. Saiso just wants one more. Tied Brainer Cleave. While that's happening, Euro Shaker finally gets spotted out. Killed off by the Kunkka. He tried to come back in and he cleaned him up with the Tide Brainer. They'll lose the Gyro. They might lose the Aegis as well. It's all going horribly wrong. Now a massive air ball on the Queen of Pain ult just has not been. Miguel's game, to say the least, and he'll end up in the end being forced to retreat. The Torrent will clean up your nature's profit. They lose two cores. They don't even take racks. They do force out one buyback on the clockwork, but... They lost three lives there on the nature's profit. Oh, wow. he, he he lost Aegis. He died again. He then back. he bought back and died again. The Kunga Cleave is pretty annoying to deal with when you push, and you can hit that from so far away. Gyrocopter was almost dead before the engagement even started. He got recalled back in, but he was still around 900 HP, and... Dying yet again. So our Earthshaker, I, I, I saw him die to the Kunkka cleave. He was standing right here, right uh, above the secret shop. Uh -huh. And I think Kunkka just cleaved like in this direction and killed him. The cleave is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm that sure. that range is insane. He doesn't even have that many damage items. Look at that. Just phase boost, magic wand, and shadow blade. And he can still just demolish. He his, now he's got a chrysalis. Now he starts to hurt a bit more. For flip side, I, I felt like they just... They once didn't have the, Echo for that fight. They had to use it on the bear, and that kind of cost them. And once but the Gyro TP back, they should not have been so aggressive. They right. need the Gyro in the fight. Sure, he gets recalled back in, but by that point, they'd already lost the Aegis, and the Nature's Prophet was caught again after the Aegis expires. And that's just another situation where 
doesn't really make sense for the Prophet to have an Aegis. You could have had two lives on your Gyro and on your Prophet. Then the Gyro does playing have to super far up, dude. He doesn't have any defensive items. He has like 1300 HP in this glass cannon build, standing right here when he can just get X torrented, bear rooted, uh, clockwork on on. That won't the Aegis won't help you there. And there's just so many things to just keep him in place and prevent him from doing any damage. They found Maglev gank trade split pushing. Now a Fissure will come through Miracle. He's already dropped an Echo Slam for this. Still, the lone Druid alive finally will go down. It's a pretty tanky oh, shaker, but in comes Saiso. He wants to be a man. I don't know if this pirate's got what it takes, though. Does he have the chops? BKB for Mania, driving Steph style on that Visage as far away as possible. Continuing to chase. He'll spot Flox Flox who TPs out, and in the end, they'll pick off the Visage and the Lone Druid. Now they're hunting Familiars. They want some extra gold to blink forward. Enchant Totem's available. The stuns are available, and the Familiars cannot be resummoned, so this is probably going to be... 200 gold heading the way of Flipside on top of the two kills. And now... Again, the bear's dead with no buyback. He does have a re-summon on the bear, so what he respawns will be able to place it, but... They've been doing a very good job seconds. of picking Maglev gank train off. Usually Lone Drew is just just wreak havoc in this stage of the game, split pushing, sometimes better than Nature's Prophet, but two deaths in the last five minutes from home, this just translates into three T3 pushes for Flipside. Easy T3 pushes. Well, I thought it was easy last time, but <laughs> they got they got destroyed. Yeah, I think if, if Mania somehow gets to Satanic, or if they just have the Earthshaker there to disengage when he doesn't he gets have BKB swing. up. If he gets x torrented, this could be very bad for them. He's basically just saying, you're not going to go on me because there's no Lone Druid. There's no way you'll look to fight. And I guess he's right. There is no way they're looking to fight. Not yet, but Kunkka Cleave attempted. Tideburner's there. Won't do a whole lot. Mania's still working on the Rex. Now he'll back off. They'll reset, they'll reload. They're afraid to fight 5-on-5. Five five. They do not want to be forcing the issue. Boogie fishing for a hook. He's got the eggs in the level 3 hook, but just could not quite land it. And checking out Roshan. Two minutes until that, two T3 towers down for Kita. And that is not a position you want to be in against a Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet does a huge amount of damage if left unchecked. I think they could just like four man on bottom and or top and just let Unicorn apply pressure to the other Bogey two Bogey just can narrow misfires for him time and again. He's been really close, but can't seem to hit these hooks. Picking off a hero like the Keeper of the Light would be big. I guess he's got a four staff, so might be able to live through that anyway, but... Just a little unfortunate they can't seem to find any kills because they need a kill soon. Else, they have to try and contest Roche when their Brax are exposed. And Prophet is the perfect hero in that situation. He can basically say, either you come contest Roche and give up Brax, or you defend your base and we take Roche. And then we take Rax. He has his Daedalus too, or very close to it. Yeah. He's so scary. I, I, don't, I don't know. I feel this is too glass cannon of a build, though. I mean, I don't think they need that much damage. It, I think it's profit. okay if he shows up late in the fight and can just clean up after most of the spells are down. Or if he just split pushes. Yeah, or if he's just split pushes. I think it's okay. But most of the time, he's just there with the team. And in a T3 push, you really want Nature's Prophet to force them to split up just so you can bunch up that hill. If they defend, you just split push with Prophet. No problem. I think he can definitely easily soul any of the one heroes from Kita. Maybe not the Lone Druid so fast, but... He has actually bought his Daedalus recipe. He doesn't have buyback for a minute, and the Demon Edge is on the courier. So now he's got the Daedalus. This is going to hurt. Yeah, he is painful. Plus 136, mm, and after the Daedalus, it's going to be maybe 400 damage. I can't Very believe close. they're still in it. Kaida Gaming, 25k gold lead, 12k experience lead, yet to lose a single lane of Rex. 41 minutes in in our first game of the set. It's a best of three between Flipside and Kaida Gaming, and it marches onwards. Kaida, Roshan number two, respawning soon. They'll maybe, if they give up that Rosh, that might just cost them the game. They have two sheeps on Flipside now, and if Kaida decides to go anywhere alone, they will just die to double sheep. Do they have a gem? Because this Earth Shaker's invis. This could be very bad for the Miracle. No tier 3 bottom. Is there a Sentry Ward in sight? Nothing to be found. Just the bear split pushing top. Are they going to look to gank it? There's your sight from Unicorn. Now Sprout as well. But he's actually caught himself inside the trees. And this bear is going to get away. Missile thrown out. Can be recalled in just about a second. There you go. Not the best gank. Yeah, he saw his coiling blade on the bear. I think it's very smart of him to actually keep it up. Sprout is a very, very long disable. Five, over five seconds if you can't actually coiling blade out, and that is almost certainly enough time for this glass cannon nature's profit to kill it over and over. One of the things that's really hurting Kaida this game is that Gyrocopter just owns Visage Familiars. Especially yeah. with Flat Cannon, so much they gold. die so fast. And I, I feel like if they were able to get a few Familiar stuns in these fights, it would make a big difference, but... Because there's only the one BKB on the gyro. Those those familiar stunts can mean the difference, but they die so fast, all he can really use them for is scouting and split push, and he can't bring them to the fights or 
He just feeds gold away. F3, trying to split push now. Three heroes in mid. Nature's Prophet on bottom. Gyrocopter on top. Just trying to force Key to stay in their T3. They're still out farming them. And eventually they will have enough control to do Roshan. And, but, as you said, Kata's the analyst. Kata has a very good anti Roshan team. And yeah, Koka's hurting. He's huge. He yeah, of... he's he's not as big as the Prophet. But the thing is, if you just hit one big crit, say you insta gib the Keeper of the Light, who doesn't have a Ghost Scepter, a crit will pretty much kill him. Yeah, or Urshaker too. Urshaker's a bit tanky. 1700 yeah, health with the eggs. But yeah, if you crit him, you could at least, even if you just hit him with Tidebreaker, maybe he doesn't get to blink in. Maybe you could follow up and bring him down. Kunkka? You never know. You go late enough, he gets a rapier, he gets even more damage items, and mm -hmm. maybe he can take it late. Divine divine rapier. He's gyro. a very unreliable hero to take it late, but. Divine yeah. rapier gyro 2.0. Yeah. Kunkka is the original gangster in that regard. And now oh, they found Miracle. The familiar scouts him out. He's isolated above the pit. He'll be four staff down. Now it's Boogie who's in trouble. He's got no hook. Was still cooling down. The familiars come through Roshan. Just dropping to a Triant, and on the low ground, it's Miguel. A Soul Assumption splashes oh, in. Grip now a grip. They found Mania. He does have a BKB, but he's going to go down too fast. Too furious on the Kunkka now. An X. A Torrent could follow. He's holding the Torrent. He'll unload it now. Miguel's low. Can they get a familiar stun in time? They can't. Buyback from the Gyro. Recalled into the fight. Now, going to work with his BKB. Triple kill for Unicorn on the backside. And they want more. They want Saiso too. This is going to be the death of their Kunkka. This is at long last flip side just having too much gold, too many items. And Miracle is trying to solo kill Maglev Gang Train. We'll need some help for this. Prophet TP cooling down in 10 seconds. Still chasing. Might die to this bear. In fact, one root would spell his death. But Miracle getting lucky here. Now they've got Aegis. Now they should really be able to end the game. Yeah, 5,300 gold on the Prophet after the Aegis. I, I, I think you just give it a mania. He just bought back. There's a whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm not liking their Aegis selections this game. Prophet's just not a great Aegis hero, especially if he doesn't have BKB. Because he dies once, he dies twice. Yeah, he's usually just in not a good position, either getting ooh, Miggle. Now the hook comes in from Boogie. He's caught to the boat as well. Where's that Kunkka crit? Where's that Kunkka crit? He just can't find it. He's got another Shadow Blade. He's chasing through the cooldown, dropping pretty low. Miracle to fall. Needs a crit. Gets the crit. Mania low. Gonna... Gonna fall the butterfly evasion keeps him alive. Oh the luck. The luck. <laughs> Saiso gets a lucky crit and then Gyro gets an even luckier evasion. And he didn't have buyback. Wow. Yep. Nature's Prophet does. He, he, I mean, he had the Aegis, he just died yet again. I watched him kill the Stop clockwork, giving this pro yeah. don't, don't give Prophet the Aegis if he's gonna go this glass cannon. I agree. It just doesn't make sense. They did manage to take one set of racks, get a little bit of damage on the one on the right side. Kita is just hanging on by a thread, trying desperately to fend off these pushes from Flipside. But the gold advantage is almost too massive at this point. And the split constant push push from the Druid has not really paid off for them. They've only taken out two towers in 45 minutes, and he's been picked off a couple times. They finally picked up a gem on Maglev Gang Train. This looks to be one of their last. There's a DD run on Kunkka. If he hits a big crit here, yeah. He has Watch like 450 out. damage. Times. Oh, they're going to spot out Miggle. Actually, they've gone onto the Kunkka. He's got a BKB, though. They've got to kill him fast. He's still alive. He BKBs, and from the backside comes Unicorn. This is that great fight that Flipside have been searching for. Unicorn joining the fight late, not being focused, and cleaning house. He'll kill a bear. He gets all the gold. All your gold belongs to me, he says. And at long last, they should be able to end this game, it looks like. No buyback on anyone except for the Lone Druid is currently alive. If Flipside want, they can go for Mega Creeps or just straight hey, to Nature's the Prophet throw. has BKB. He went one defensive item. <laughs> we don't see Nature's Prophet do this very often. I'm very, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Rapier, man. He had to almost had the gold for it. Very disappointing, Unicorn. XO, XO. And Not showing the cast. Why are they love. going top? I, I would think that could bottom would be it. a better choice. They, they could just throw it, honestly. No yeah. They have a Desolator. There will be a hook coming in. Boogie just trying to slow down this aggression. Back he, door protection. He will cog and fight his way out. They're fighting through it though. They've got the Desolator. They've got the Gyro with the big damage item. It'll be two lanes of racks for them. It could easily be three. And with that, I think at long glass, Flipside have secured game one for Kaida Gaming. Not a lineup they can just go for your throne or base trade. They're still dead on two. No buybacks available. Another Hulk. More stalling for Boogie. But he'll get sights. He'll get blown up. Now an Echo Slam. That cow is hitting like a truck. Maglev Gang Train, the bear on the run. It's cow on bear genocide. And the Got cows with prevail. The sonic wave. <laughs> there is no cow level. That's a GG. I yeah, there is no cow level. Flipside had such a huge advantage early game. They had like 10,000 gold. You know, like this was minutes. very sloppy. It was, it was sloppy, to say the least. I mean, they have a lot of a lot of legendary old school players, a lot of good teams, but 
you expect more polished play from players like yeah, Rise, Miguel. Yeah, we we know they can do better. Kita did. Pr they were very resilient though in that mid game, and even though they had such a huge deficit, they were able to find a radiance on the bear, even though it was a little bit late. Find some sort of farm with Kuka and have a couple of successive smoke ganks that got them back in the game. And had had they maybe been there to contest the first Roshan, things would have gone a lot differently. They were a little bit ready prepared or a little bit prepared for the second one with the familiars, but too a little too late. Gold was way too much in. Well, in the end, guys, in, that's in the green. Yeah, in the green. That's gonna wrap up game one. It's a best of three. We're gonna take a quick break. It's the Corsair Summer Tour. 2013. If you haven't already heard, they're giving away not only Dota TV tickets, but now a computer as well. For more information, head over to gc.corsair.com and enter for your chance to win. I'm LD, he's Merlini, and after these messages, we'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you.